Jiggy cat on a damn feeling spree. This is not good, so and you can't mimic my energy. 100 round drum and be hanging like a centipede. Hey everyone, it's me Nagato's Avenge here. Hope you guys are having an awesome day for today and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be talking about on how to install one menu file explorer for your modded PlayStation Vita or for your modded PS TV. And within one menu file explorer, you can install games, run homebrew, also FTP and some other cool things that I'll be showcasing in today's video. With that being stated out the way as well, we're just going to get straight into it for um, today's prerequisites, excuse me, and everything I'll stay will be in the link in the description down below, of course course so first things first you either need a modded playstation Vita or a ps tv that's running either between firmware 3.60 or 3.73 firmware so whether if you're using hankaku h on core um you know the trinity exploit h on core 2 hankaku enzo as long as your playstation Vita or your ps tv for that matter could run unsigned code then you're basically good for this guide as well you also need the latest version of vita shell you also need the latest version of one menu and either or you need a usb cable or file to the ftp client depending on how you want to transfer your files um for today and as well you may need winwar everything as i stated before will be in the link in the description down below but all of that getting started and set out the way we're going to go to pc and and our playstation video excuse me to get this all set up Alrighty everyone, assuming that you guys did follow all the prerequisites as stated in the intro, let's go ahead and get started on how to get one menu onto our PlayStation Vita or our PS TV. So I'm already assuming that you already have Vita Shell on your device. If not, I will have that in the link in the description down below. But all we gotta do is just launch into Vita Shell. Go ahead and hit OK. And now, depending on what we want to do in terms of transferring your files over, um, all we have to do is just get our USB cable ready if you're going to be transferring via files over that way. If you're going to be doing FTP like me for today's example, since this file is not too large, uh, all you got to do is go into your start menu. If you're going to be transferring your files with a USB charging cable, make sure your cable is in your PC to your Vita and make sure that the select button right here, it's toggled to USB. If you're going to be doing it wirelessly via with Wi-Fi, just make sure that's to FTP and make sure your Vita uh, basically your Wi-Fi is on and then all you got to do is hit select and then if you're doing um, you know FTP just like me you should see your PlayStation Vita's IP address once you have your PlayStation Vita uh, excuse me Vita's IP address or PSTVs just leave it on standby and then what we're going to do is go to our desktop and then I'm going to showcase on how to transfer this file over via with the use of files of the FTP client Alrighty guys, so we're back onto the PC as showcased here. As of right now, whether you're using files of the FTP client to transfer your files over or you have a USB cable plugged in from your PC to Vita and you're transferring files via, um, you know, the USB cable method, just go ahead in the link in the description down below. I will have the website where you can download the one menu.vbk file. All you would have to do is either, you know, transfer your file to these same directories. And if you're using files of the FTP client like me, what we need to do is type in our PlayStation Vita's IP address in our port. Once I edit out the video, somewhere in this section right here, I will have a picture on you know how your you should have this formatted. So your IP will definitely be different than mine's, but mine's is this right here. And on your Vita, it will just tell you. But our ports will always be the same, which is one through three seven. So once you have your IP address and your Vita is open still, what we need to do is go. Let me just maximize this real quick not too sure why it's scrunched up what we need to do is go into ux0 and this is where we're going to be basically transferring our file to so let me just back out for a second let me minimize filezilla so what we're going to do is take our one menu dot vita vbk or wherever you have it at just drag and drop to ux0 uh, i already have the file here so let me just overwrite since I previously had it on my Vita. But as you see here, my file is now transferring over from uh, my PlayStation Vita or my PC to my Vita. So it may not take too long. It only has five seconds left since it's not a huge file. And then what we're gonna do is verify. So you get a little notification on your screen. I'll say all files have successfully transferred over. And in the logs right here, it'll say that the actual file itself will be successfully transferred over. If we go into UX zero, I believe, uh, you can see that my file has successfully transferred over again. So what we're going to do now is just close out a file that has to be client. If you're using a USB cable, all you got to literally do is just drag and drop. But what we're going to do now is go to our PlayStation Vitas, get this all set up, and then basically showcase what it can do. 
Alrighty, so as of right now, we could go ahead and disconnect out from our F2B server as well as your USB cable connection if you're doing that method. But what we need to do now is go into UX0. So let's scroll down to here, find one menu.vpk. So let's just go and install the package. It shouldn't take too long at all since it's only 4.44 megabytes. So pretty, you know, not a big ass uh, package. Excuse my French. But um, once it's fully done as well, we're just gonna launch it just like any normal uh, homebrew. So it's fully done. And now all we gotta do is open up one menu for PlayStation Vita. Just open it up. And then voila, here is the actual application itself. So it kind of has like a little Nintendo Switch type feel to it if you ever play the Switch. But for example, let's say if I wanted to launch one of my titles, so here is Call of Duty, I can from this menu. Uh, if I go back into one menu again, I'll show you some other features. So just to showcase that you can run, um, you know, other applications you can, uh, you could toggle. So basically what it does, it toggles um, all of your games. So instead of just having, you know, everything on your live area all messy, you can see that it toggles homebrew. It can actually detect which is homebrew or not, which is pretty cool. Uh, it also can detect PS mobile games so that's another thing if you are interested in how to install playstation mobile games i will have a card right now on the screen for that um as well if you have any adrenaline bubbles and stuff like that it could launch games as well so here's gran turismo i also have uh, the japanese version and english version of kingdom hearts so you can see that basically it's just a user interface some other cool things if you hit start you can, um, you know, show every picture bubble. You can change the style and theme. If you want like the PS4 X and B, if you want to have auto updates, you can. If you want to actually refresh the live area, you can as well. I believe if you hit select, you can also see your other file partitions, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to, you know, copy a folder, move extract, you can as well. Uh, if you want to play music, I'm not too sure. Uh, if I have music on my Vita, I may have it. So let me check the import music folder. Yeah, so if I go into this right here, if I shut up for a second, um, one menu can actually play music, which is pretty cool. Let me just get out of that. Uh, if I wanted to view a picture, trying to find me if I have any pictures. Let me see if I have a random screenshot. So yeah, it can actually view pictures. So it's basically just like Vita Shell. And those are just some of the cool things you can do within this thing. Um, I'm not too sure how to set up FTP yet on this side of here. Let me see. I know you can export multimedia, but there's just a bunch of stuff you can do with in, um, you know, one menu, which is pretty cool. And I do like its GUI, even though I mostly prefer Vita Shell since it's more simplistic. I think one menu is a pretty cool uh, homebrew app to have on your PlayStation Vita. But yeah, that's essentially on how to get this fully installed onto your device. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like. Please be sure to, um, you know, comment and subscribe down below. And also, right when I'm about to end the video, if you hit start in this menu, I guess you could go ahead and, you know, FTP and file USB. So I found it already before I ended in the video. Uh, but that being said, out the way, guys, I will see you in the next video. And peace. Hey everyone, it's me Nagato's Adventure. Hope you guys did enjoy today's video. With that being out the way as well, I highly do recommend that y'all guys go ahead and follow my social media so you never miss any of the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel by subscribing to me and hitting that notification button as well. It's another method on how you will know when I drop my latest content, whether it be for the Vita, PS4, PS3, and such and so forth. As well, if you want to be in a mix of things and you want to join my official community, you can join via the link right now showcased on the screen and join my my discord that way and if you do want to support my channel in any shape or form you could become a patron i will have a card right now but with all of that getting out the way hope you guys really did enjoy this video and i'll see y'all next time peace